Today we are vlogging in Dearborn, Michigan. One of my favorite actors from when I was a little kid. Should be fun. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. There it is, that's where we're heading. And it's really not too far from where this guy went to high school. This is Northview Cemetery. So I believe he's all the way to the back. All right, we've made it. Now, today is a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Jared Hara. Jared, I hope you were a fan of the A-Team or Breakfast at Tiffany's or a myriad of the other movies that George Papar made. Let's pay our respects to George Papar and talk a little bit about his difficult life. So right over here, you can see the street in the background if you're coming to visit yourself. We actually went in a big loop and he was all the way around this side. This is the grave of George Papard Jr. Also known by me as John Hannibal Smith from the A-Team. George Papard. You can see he's buried here with his parents, his father, George the Builder, his mother Vernell, who was a singer, and George's fifth wife, who's still alive on top, and George right there, passed away in 1994. George Papard, from this area, raised in Dearborn and went to Dearborn High School before moving on to going to Purdue and then transferring over to Carnegie Mellon for engineering in Pittsburgh and once he got to Pittsburgh, that's where he got his taste of acting. He joined the Pittsburgh Playhouse and fell in love with performing. He loved Sam Houston, that was his inspiration. He would work his way into eventually going to New York to the actor's studio and studying with Lee Strasberg, The Method, which, I mean, if you think of the people that went and taught or went and studied with Lee Strasberg, it's pretty unbelievable. You have people like Dennis Hopper, James Dean, Montgomery Clift, George Papard, Shelley Winters. And it was really a who's who of acting back in the late 40s and early 50s. And they would have all been doing that together. Now he was discovered on Broadway by a studio that wanted to put him in a film and they as part of taking the film required him to sign a contract, which he did never want to do. He did never want to be beholden to one company. He wanted to be able to do theater and do really anything he wanted. So he had a great career. I mean, I think a lot of people primarily know him from Bang the Drum Slowly or even Breakfast at Tiffany's, co-starring Audrey Hepburn. But for me, it was Colonel John Hannibal Smith from the A-Team. George Papard, for many years of his life, was a very difficult man to deal with. And I don't think until probably right before his passing, he ever really understood how difficult he was. He knew how difficult he was because he told people. In fact, he introduced himself the first day on the A-Team to uh, Dwight Schultz, who played Hal and Mad Murdoch, he went up to him in, in the makeup room and said, put his hand out there and said, I'm George Papard. People say I'm a very difficult man. He said, my wife, she told me when I was a drinker that I hit her with a frying pan. If I hit her with a frying pan, she would have been dead. Then he walked away, and that was his introduction to Dwight Schultz. So for me... This show came on in 1983. I would have been two and a half years old, but even as a kid, I had the action figures, I had the Hot Wheels, I had all that stuff, and my family and I never missed it. When it was on the weekend, I think it was Saturday night, was it Friday night or Saturday night? Eight o'clock, they set it for eight o'clock because they said that they wanted it to be, it was never meant for anyone like grown up, they said this was always meant for kids. This was a TV show that was meant for like five-year-old kids and moms. And so when the show came on the air, it was in the top 10 really quickly. 
And, um, and once it became a hit show, George Papard, who had been, you know, this matinee idol, this serious actor his whole life, he viewed himself when he got this show, he auditioned, got the part, he viewed himself as the star of this show. But if you know this show, then you know that Mr. T was actually the star of this show. You see, Mr. T had been discovered and put in the Rocky movie. And Stephen J. Cannell saw him and said, this guy's got it. We gotta create something for him. And that's where the A-Team came from. So the whole concept for the A-Team was that there were these four military men who were now on the run, basically. The story is that they were in the Vietnam War and their colonel or their, the man over top of them gave them an order to go rob the Bank of Hanoi and that would end the war. Well, the person who gave them the order ends up dying and no one knew that those four men, B.A. Baracus, Face Man, Helen Mad Murdoch, and Hannibal Smith were sent to do that. And so that's what this show is basically about is that they were court-martialed and they were supposed to be executed and they escaped. So now they're living in the Los Angeles underground. Each one has a specific skill set that makes them invaluable to the A-team. And if you have a problem and if you can afford them and if you can find them, you could hire the A-team. So Mr. T was B.A. Baracus. He was the, the brawn and he was also the mechanic of the group. George Papard was Colonel Hannibal Smith. He was the leader. He was the man who always had a plan and he loved it when a plan came together. He was also, his day job, because they were always trying to be hidden in plain sight, his day job was that he was a background actor. He was a character actor. So we would often see him get into costumes and have different disguises, not only while he was working, but also while they were trying to get rid of the bad guys or protect the city or whatever it was that they were hired to do. So once the show became a success, George Papard saw himself as the star and Dwight Schultz said he would walk onto this set and just say, okay, I'm not working any other hours except 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. That's it, eight to five and I'm gone. And they were having a problem with this because when you make TV, those are 14 hour filming days and they really need, in most cases for afternoon, evening shots, they need those hours. So Dwight Schultz and, um, Dirk Benedict both would say they would receive calls from Stephen J. Cannell saying, hey, can you keep the guys on the set today? Can you try and talk them into staying? Because once George Papard saw that the show hit number one and he would go out and address the, the people on set and say, um, as the star of the hit show, The A-Team, I think, and that's how he would address people, he turned a lot of people off to that. But once he decided he was only going to work from 8 to 5, then Mr. T decided he was only going to work from 8 to 5. So then Dwight Schultz and Dirk Benedict had to start picking up the slack and the filming and staying later, coming in earlier, all that stuff. And they just said it became really uncomfortable to be on set because, sadly, George Papard had been a heavy drinker most of his life. And he had finally given it up and... Um, and spent a lot of his time helping people as a sponsor to get off of it. But he threw everything else into his work and his acting. And it just became unbearable. They hired Robert Vaughn to come in in the fifth season because the ratings were starting to tank. And a lot of people on the set said it was kind of the, it was the, just the aura of being on the set that was not helping either. And, you know, Dirk Benedict and Dwight Schultz would both say, you know, one of the problems we had was that that George Papard, though he could be difficult and though it, it could be infuriating, you know, because you just wanted to sometimes do things the way they were written on the page or whatever, he knew a script and he knew what worked and what didn't. And so when he would come in and he'd look at Dwight and he would throw down his script and the entire page would be crossed out in Sharpie and he would say, that's all I'm saying today. Like he was basically saying, I'm cutting out all those lines that don't need to be there. Dwight would say, you know, that would create a problem because then that screwed up everybody else's lines and what was going to happen. But he said, you know, the sad thing was in a lot of cases, he was so good at knowing how a script worked that he wasn't wrong. But the other problem on set was that Robert Vaughn said, Mr. T 
he thought was completely insane. He said that Mr. T talked nonstop from the time he showed up on set till the time he left. And he said he would talk about next to nothing. He said he would tell you, he would just talk to hear himself talk and people would walk away and he wouldn't even notice. He said he was always jibber jab, using Mr. T's <laughs> phrase, he was always jibber jabbering about his life thoughts and just what he, just anything that came to mind. And that was kind of what tore the set apart was it's like you had four guys that were part of a team making a great show, but two of the guys see themselves as the star and they couldn't get along and they actually hated each other. They would go do parades for the kids and Hannibal would scowl at the kids. Like they said, George Papard would get upset because he would see the reaction the kids had to Mr. T. But to give George a lot of credit, after the show was over, and, and even Robert Vaughn said, when I got when I got the, the, the part to come in for that fifth season, I was the guy that was gonna hire the A-team and I was gonna be in charge of the A-team and everything. He said, George told me when I walked onto set, you're gonna have to deal with this guy, Mr. T. He's a total crazy person. But to George's credit, he got sick um, the last couple years of his life with throat cancer. And he made amends to Mr. T. He reached out and apologized for his behavior and just apologized for how hard he was to deal with. Um, I think there was always, you know, a respect given lightly in both regards, but George Papard saw himself as a real actor. He saw himself as someone who put the time in to learn a craft. And he, he really, really, from what everybody on set said, he really did not appreciate Mr. T coming in and, you know, just basically being this guy with a mohawk with muscles and everyone loving him. He just couldn't understand that. He couldn't understand that people didn't care about the lack of talent. So the last thing that George Papard worked on was an episode of Matlock. And then sadly, just a week later, he passed away. So rest in peace, George Papard. Even if you were a difficult man, you gave us some incredible art. I don't think anyone that's ever seen the A-Team can argue that. I think, in fact, he no, that the fact that I love all the characters in the A-Team for separate reasons, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of all of them. I do think Hannibal was the coolest of all of them. And uh, it's nice to see that someone sent a Christmas wreath. I hope it's from perhaps his wife or one of his children. I love you, Laura. Yes, it's from George's last wife. It's beautiful. I believe it was right around 2008. I was just in a record store one time having a hard time finding anything that I wanted to buy as far as a record or DVDs when you mainly bought DVDs in record shops. And I remember thinking to myself, I haven't seen the A-Team since I was a kid. I wonder if it still holds up. So thinking that way also, I thought, well, usually the best of every show is the first season. Let's get the first season. I was hooked. I bought it. The first episode was a two-parter. It was like a movie basically, but it was a different face man. It was a guy, to me, he had no charisma. So when you see that Dirk Benedict got the part and was so good in it, you totally can understand why they replaced him. But I did see an interview with Dirk Benedict at one point saying that that guy who had been casting originally was up for the part of like Magnum PI against Tom Selleck and various other things. He was a big actor at that time, I guess. I'd never heard of him. But as far as like being sent out on auditions, they knew him from seeing him at every audition for every leading role. And, uh, and he got that part and then they ended up taking him out of it and replacing him with Dirk Benedict. And then also kind of a cool thing was, since I got so into Dirk Benedict at that time, his mailing address, his PO box was online. And I found a photo of him in front of the 18 Corvette and mailed it to him. And he sent me a very nice birthday message back on that eight by 10. George was married five times. His first wife was Elizabeth Ashley, the actress. But from everything I could find, it seemed like his marriage to Laura was truly his happiness and that she truly made his life better. So someday I'm sure she'll be here joining him, but rest in peace, Hannibal. Well, my friends, I want to thank Sloan Sheatham Knight, Josh Bramble, Kim Smith, Bruce Morgan, Seth, and Mark Tomlinson for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching, and goodbye.